in chapter 7, you get over in chapter 7, and the last part of it, and then we're going to Romans there. But Paul's talking about the flesh. He's talking about that uh, he has a battle with flesh. Here's a man of God. He had the battle, and I think everybody has a battle with the flesh. And if you don't, there's something wrong. He, but he tells us there's no good thing that comes out of the flesh. He said, the things I want to do, I don't do. Uh, and he said, the things I shouldn't do, I do. That's what he's mounting to there. But he said, there's a law in there in his memories. There's a war going on, you know, against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity, the law of sin and so forth. And if you don't watch, it'll bring us all into the law of captivity of sin. Because you get weak in the Lord and you're, you're headed that way. The devil's got you where he wants you to be. And, of course, he <laughs> hangs up all these trinkets in the world and all these toys in the world and so forth and tries to get you out on that. That's what he does for their young people, too. I, I really appreciate that lesson Isaac taught this morning. And Mark, too, talked about the young people listening to their parents and all. But if you don't watch the things of this world allure you, yeah, there's, there's several, several different reasons there. But today we want to talk about how to overcome all of that. And uh, I think it's important that we realize that. He says there, he, he said, verse 24, I'm going to read. You don't have to get it. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. He has a deliverer. Then he tells us in chapter 8, 19 times he speaks of the Spirit of God, 19 different times. And the Spirit of God is to lead us, to teach us. And uh, he said he'd lead us into all truth. And if we're listening, if you're saved, you have the Spirit of God. But he says in verse 9 of chapter 8 now, he said, but... You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, what do he say? None of his. And you know when the spirit of God comes to live in you. I'm sure the younger people don't understand it too much. I didn't understand it. I know the Holy Spirit comes to live in me and I got saved. But I found out pretty, somebody was taking me to the church. Somebody was taking me to the Bible to read it. And I didn't understand all the changes there, but I found out from my pastor, he told me, he said, Sam, you're indwelt by the Spirit of God. Well, I didn't understand that, but I began to learn down through the years that we understand that. But he teaches these wonderful truths to us in chapter 8, how that we have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is victory all through this chapter. And it's wonderful. He said there's no condemnation in there, and there's no frustration, and there's no separation. All these things are in there. But I'm going to speak to one verse, but we're going to pray first, okay? Father, thank you for the privilege and honor it is to be here today and to take the Word of God as you spoke to me as we penned it down, God, how precious it is to be able to teach the Word of God. But I need the sweet Holy Spirit within myself. I'm nothing, couldn't do it. And God, we need that fresh anointing and give me clarity of mind and boldness to preach. And God, and lift up the precious name of Jesus and magnify him and glorify our wonderful Father in heaven. If there's one here that's lost today, we pray for that soul to be saved, God. And if there's one walking afar off, they need to be restored. Each one of us needs to have heart that adheres and receives, but also to be doers of the word of God when we go out of here and when we're living in this old wicked world. And give us that, that what you want us to have today. And may I not say anything that wouldn't be pleasing to you and bring glory to you and that I say exactly what you want us to say. In Jesus Christ's precious name, we love you and it's because you first loved us. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to skip over to verse 27. Verse 27, many people probably preach by this from this verse, but this is the way that God gave it to me, okay? Verse 27, look what he says. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's pretty good, isn't it? More than conquerors. He starts out there in verse 1, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress, persecution or phantom or nakedness or pearl or sword? As it is written, 
For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And he said we're more than conquerors. Not just conquerors, but more than conquerors. And all these things that happen. You reckon he's, he, we're more than conquerors in this virus that come around if we've got Christ in our heart? Amen. Not to say we won't get it. That's not to say that. But we know one thing. If we do contract that disease or whatever it might be, but God is there with us. And God knows all. He knew it before it ever happened. He knew. He knew the ones. We have many preacher friends, not many, but several preacher friends I know that have contacted this. And we know some families that's contacted it and the church and so forth. But God knew it before it ever come. And God's got a reason for letting it linger here. He can stop it in a minute if he wanted to. But he hasn't. But until then, we're going to go on doing what he wants us to do. We're going to preach, teach, and, and live the word of God like God wants us to. And it's, it's most important. There's a law of liberty in the Christian's life. I want to come together in unity and the same mind to learn what God has been trying to teach us in his precious word. To have victory, victory in temptation, victory in trials. Victory in tribulations, victory in tragedies, and victory over Satan, and victory over self, and victory over this old wicked world. The, it's uh, that old flesh. Paul says in, in, in at verse back there in chapter 7, I, I didn't read it, but he says in verse 18, I know that in me. Now here's a man of God, if there ever was one, that in me, that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I, must, I find not. He learned. He's like the rest of us. He had to learn. You have to learn. I have to learn. But they said, said it right this morning. We don't stop learning. We continue to learn every day of our life. And when you stop and slow down, that's when the devil's going to get in on you. I promise you that. He'll get in there and, and you'll be sorry that you did slow down and, and stop. He talks about that. Victory is a Christ life. He says it very plainly in Philippians 1.21. We've been studying the book of Philippians on Wednesday night. For to me to live is Christ. For to me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. He tells us very plainly in Galatians, and, and, and it's, it's a wonderful book there that he talks about his life and, and, and what a wonderful life. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians. And it's, it's a blessing to be able, Galatians chapter 2, I should have told you in verse 20. It's, Christ wants us to live a life, but he wants to live that life through us, through the person of the Holy Spirit being led and teaching us through the precious word of God. And that's the only way you're going to get that life in you is to study and to show yourself approved of God. Because working need not be ashamed, right, divide the word truth. But we must teach good teaching we had this morning, and, and we need preaching. Every once in a while, somebody needs to let her go. You know, we've got to let her go. Victory is, in, is a Christ life, a Christ victory in Jesus. We sing that wonderful song. We, we're not singing now, but one of these days we're going to bust it loose again. We're going... Victory is found in the scriptures. He's just teaching us in this little book here. Romans is, is one of the finest books you'll ever come to about learning about victory. And read 7 and, and 8 together. Victory is, is implemented through the Holy Spirit. He's one that implements it in your life, the Holy Spirit. Learn to be led by the Spirit of God. That's a, I had to learn. I'm still learning every day. That is, this, is this God leading me through the Spirit of God? Is this God teaching me through the Spirit of God? Because as far as you're concerned, as far as I'm, we can do nothing without Him. It's what the Bible tells us very plainly. 
This wonderful verse, I want, maybe you'll get something out of it you haven't gotten before, and I did when I was studying this time. Nay, in all these things, things we talked about, all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That includes this virus. We're more than conquerors. We can have peace during this time because Jesus Christ gives us peace, not the world. He said the peace I give you over in John chapter 14, verse 26. He said, this is the peace that I give you, not what the world gives you. Don't let the world take away from something that God has given you. He said, he tells us he gives us his joy. He said, I give you my joy that your joy may be full. Not what the world, temporary joy about something, but joy that he gives us. Don't let the world take it away. That's, it's, it's, it's silly to walk around and, and let the world take, rob you from your joy, your peace, and, and, and not only that, your victory. We don't have victory. Most don't. It said, the spirit of our victory Look what he says, in all these things. Not some things, name it. He says victory. Name it, victory. It doesn't matter what it is. Trouble, victory in it. This too shall come to end. When the, this is, it's God going to give you victory in it. You have victory over sin. He tells us very plainly in Romans chapter 6, or again, you know, something we need to know says, what shall we then say then? Shall we continue in sin that the grace of God may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us were baptized in Jesus Christ, was baptized in his death. That's what we need to do. It, it, it's, it's, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you continue in sin and you want to continue in sin, you better check up on your salvation. It, listen, you're either so far out of the will of God that you're not paying any attention, nothing God got to say, or you need to be saved. Sin shouldn't be that way to you no more. In these things, he didn't, if you just put that in, leave the word all out, in these things, no escape is provided. No escape is provided. But God says in, in, in verse 2, there, in chapter in eight, verse 8, chapter 8 in Romans, look what he says, verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. He's talking about Romans 8. I'm, gonna, I'm in over and back in 6. That ain't going to do us no good. I'm staying over there. Get out of there. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me what? Free, Free from the law of sin and death. If God shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. He said, if the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. You shall know the truth, the truth, and the truth will set you free. I don't want to go back to the hell hole that I come out. I never did want to. The day after I was saved, I didn't want to go back. Never did want to go back. I was scared I was going to go back. I thought you could lose it. I didn't know then, Brother Dean, that you had eternal life and I got saved. I'd been hurt all my life that you could lose it. I went and talked to my preacher about it. And he said, you can't lose it, Sam, but he said, you need to live it. And then he showed me and began to teach me how to live a life for Christ. And it's all in the Bible. It's important. But there is a way of escape. God always makes a way of escape. You go with me to 1 Corinthians and, and, and chapter 10 and verse 13. I love this verse and I use it a lot. And you, you, you probably do too. And, and, and it's a wonderful verse that we have here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. There has no temptation. Now, that, I said temptation a while ago, you know, try, and all that. Victory and temptation, trials and all that. So there has no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is tempted, and listen, God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But what he'll do? But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. 
make a way to escape. If you're tempted, God's got a way there to get out. He told you what some of the things he tells you don't. He said, don't, don't uh, flee from the very presence of evil. We know to do that, don't we? And he says, there's make a way that you may be able to bear it. All things, not some things, but all things God said. I've told you about the story the lady telling me. She said, God knows my flesh is no good. I said, yeah, Paul knew that. He, he pinned it down because God gave it to him. But that doesn't mean you continue in the flesh. It doesn't mean you walk in the flesh, you walk in the spirit. It doesn't mean you are led by the flesh, you're led by the spirit. It's so important that we know that. And he tells us very plainly that, that freedom we have there. But listen, there's a lot of times the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, after the spirit. It's all about it. Talk about it. Most Christians are defeated in the circumstances. Circumstances. We talked about that the other day in Philippians. You remember that? We were talking about the joy. Paul was talking about joy. We said circumstances is one of the things that will rob you of your joy. Because you're looking at the circumstances instead of looking at God. God, God didn't say that you'd be defeated in the circumstances. He said you have, you're more than conquerors through him that loved you through circumstances. It's important. The sphere in which no exceptions are permitted. There's a, there's a, a diameter or you want to put it in, or you put a radius out there or you want to put it. But what does he say? All things. Not some things, but all things. He says most would say that they are not living a Christian life, the sphere of that. But God says all things. In all things, all these things, God wants you to have victory. There's many a person that's thinking about this stuff going on now, you know. He, we, want to be, we don't want to be stupid. We want to do what we're supposed to be doing, but no. But we ought to be fearful either. It, perfect love casts out fear. I've got perfect love in my heart because Jesus shed it abroad in my heart. He cast out all the fear is torment. And fear then never it came into the world. I told you that before. The first time the word afraid was ever mentioned in the Bible. Over when Adam sinned and God said, where you at, Adam? And he said, back there. And he said, I'm over here. He said, where are you hiding for? And he said, I was afraid. You know why he was afraid? He sinned. And that's where sin, that's the first time the word's ever mentioned. Sin causes fear, but perfect love casts out sin. He's not given us, listen, God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us, this, you know, a sound mind and, a, and all that. And, oh, in, and we, we read it all the time, but it, it's probably good to read it again there in 1 Timothy or, I don't, and see what he says about that fear. And, and it's so important in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God wants you to know that. He wants you to have victory in it. We got the spirit, but we got the scale of our victory. We are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. There need be no delay. Paul does not say we shall be. He says we now we are more than conquerors now. Not that it shall be someday or it might be someday, but we are more than conquerors today and ready to write what God wants us to be. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Victory to many is just a dream. They're still living in torment. It's a sad thing that we do because we don't have to. Victory. In Jesus Christ. If he can pull you out of hell and pull me out of hell, surely he can take care of our problems while we're here, whatever it might be. Yes. We're going to die, everybody. He says, appointed unto man wants to die, and after this is judgment. We're going to die. Amos 4.12 tells us, prepare to meet thy God. We want to prepare to meet him. We don't meet him afraid and fearful. We ought to fear God and what, what, what you know, there's chastisement and there's scourging and so forth for God's people when they get out of the whack. 
He said, if I don't chasten you, he said, you're not mine. He said, you're not children, my children. He said, go on and say, but thank God. God wants you to have the victory. The need, uh, listen, there need to be de no delay there. And there is to be no doubt. Why do we want to doubt what God says in this word? You don't doubt what they teach you in some of these things in these places you go to, but we don't need to doubt God. Let God be true and every man a liar. That's what the Bible says. Isn't that what it says? Let God be true and every man a liar. The word of God is the truth. Jesus Christ, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, he says. He's the truth. That's what we need. We need the truth in this world. Wouldn't it be wonderful if politics started speaking in truth? You know, that, that, we'd probably all pass out and fall out somewhere if that happened. That, that, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. There's no doubt we are super conquerors. You know, if, if, if God was speaking about money, he, if Paul's wor word had been taken or uh, talking uh, in money matters, you know what he would have said? He would have said, we are multimillionaires. Hey. Boy, you'd be tickled to death that, wouldn't you, if you're a multimillionaire and I could go to spend it all over this whole world and send it, and end up like that, uh, what's one of one, 300 and some million dollars, uh, Whitaker? He's dead now. He didn't enjoy it. He lost his wife. He lost his children. He lost his grandchildren. He lost everything he had as far as life. He had 300 and some million dollars. Didn't do him very really good. Sad. Money can't buy happiness. Money can't buy salvation. Money can't buy true joy. Money surely can't buy peace. I promise you that. But the happiest and most joyful people in this world should be God's people, God's Christians. They should be the happiest and most joyful people they are. Super conquerors in the scale of our victory and the spirit of our victory. But then we goes on to talk about the source of our victory. You've got to realize where your victory's at. It's not in you. Paul said the things I want to do, I, I don't do. The things I don't do, I do. Because you're robed with the flesh. Flesh didn't get saved. And it, their flesh is not going to heaven either. That's the reason we've got to have a body changed and get a glorified body if we're living when he comes. And that's the reason that we've got to be buried, put this old flesh that go back to the dust so we'll get a new body when God resurrects us up and we'll have a, a glorified body. I don't want to take this thing up or I got too many things bothering me yet. I'm telling you. I just had some heart problems there and had it fixed. I, 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 when God came in, he gave me a brand new heart. He gave me a brand new heart. He gave me a heart that desires the things of God. My desires change. My directions change. He gave me a desire to have uh, directions and, 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 and go to church and do the things with sin of the hell hole to went through and all that. He gave me that the desires in my heart and the directions to change. But my destination changed. What a, what a blessed hope we have. One day we're going to see Jesus face to face. We're not going to walk around with our crowns on our head. We're going to lay them at his feet and cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He's the one that gets the crowns. Not you, not me. It's all about God. What a wonderful Savior we have. The source of our victory. To talk about it makes you... Chills run all over me when I speak of the victory that we have. Through him that loved us. He said, I've loved you with an everlasting love. And this same chapter here, he said, there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Hey. Nothing. It's ever been. He's talked about everything. And then all at once he got over. And he says, nothing, no height, no depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from that love. We all seen things happen in families and not don't want to, that divorce and different things. And I've seen people say, I don't love them no more, you know, and I don't want to be with them. I don't love them no more and all these things. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus will never tell you that. 
He loved you before you was even saved. But God commended his love towards us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for your rotten soul and mine too. That's because he loved you. He loved me too. Praise God, not only us. He said he, he's the propitiation for our sins. He's in our stead, not for ours only, but the sins of the whole world. If the whole world knew that, wouldn't that be wonderful that they could recognize that and know that, that God loves them? But we're to take that love of God to them. We're to show them what a wonderful Savior, what he can do with a life when he gets a hold of it. It's such a blessing. Thank God. Read that verse again. He says, it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors, conquerors through him that loved us, loved us, loved us. A life that is triumphant. We got victory over sin. We got victory over this old flesh. Because greater is he. He tells us right here about this, all about it. He says, what shall, verse 31, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 31. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And then he talks about, he that spared not his own son, but, that's verse 32, delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us what? All things. All things. All things that we need, and I promise you, he'll give them to us, and he, he'll, he'll provide what we need, and God always does. Conquerors through him that loved us. I read Philippians 1.21, and he says, Philippians 2.5, we've been studying that book. He talks, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You said, well, uh, how do I get a mind like that? The Bible tells us how to do that, too. You can get that mind. Tell us in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And he says in verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do I do that? That you may prove and what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing of your mind through the word of God. God wants you to have a mind like him. He wants you to think on the right things. And he'll put that mind in if you'll let him. He'll take that mind and show you exactly what he wants you to do if you'll let him. Be transformed and be not conformed to this world. Our appetites should be growing less and less every day for the things of this world. Our appetites should be for the precious Word of God. When we first get saved, said we desire uh, the milk of the Word as newborn babes. But there comes a time we need to get on the meat. There comes a time when we need to grow up. Isaac talked about perfect this morning. He means complete. God wants a complete Christian. I was talking to a man years ago, and he's, he's in heaven now. He said, I'm a complete Jew. I said, what do you mean a complete Jew? When you're a Jew, when you're born? He said, no. He said, I'm a complete Jew now. I said, how do you mean that? He said, I've been born again, blood washed. Now I'm a complete Jew, he said. Hey. <laughs> That's pretty good. I thought he said, he told me that. That's great. Then a life that is triumph or victory in Jesus. A love that is trustworthy. Can you trust his love? He said it, it, there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Nothing in the world. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He said he'd indwell us with the spirit of God and live his life through us if we'd let him. A love that can be trustworthy. He'll never come to you one day and said, I don't love you anymore. He'll never come to you one day and said, I'm going to kick you out of the family. He might straighten us out a few times. We need that, all of us do. But you're always a member of that family. What does he say there in Romans chapter 8 about that family household of God? I just love that, what he says there. I think it's verse 19 there, no doubt down there. It's maybe it's not. 
I was reading that a while ago, and it says in verse, I'm going to get down here. For we are saved in the household of God, you know, for we know that we're in the household of God. I know that I'm in a family. We sing that old wonderful song, you know, thank God I'm, I'm a member of the family of God. What a wonderful phrase it is. A love that is trustworthy through him that loved us, through him that loved us. God's love is faithful. He says for us to be faithful. God's love is abundant. He said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I wouldn't trade one day of my life with Jesus Christ for everything I had before that. That first day I was saved, I knew that there was something I'd never understand completely. Being in the family of God. And as after 45 years, it's the sweetest thing that ever happened to me. And it gets sweeter as you get closer to home, I promise you that. If you'll just stay in the Word of God, it gets sweeter all the way. Abundant life. Before Jesus died, he was tempted in all things like we have been. But after his death, he defeated death. He was never tempted again. You ever think of that? He was never tempted again. I wonder why Paul said, and, and Philippians over there, I wonder why he said in verse 10, in chapter 3 of Philippians, that I may know him. Well, Paul, you already know him. You're saved. He said, no, there's something else I need more in my life yet. And the power of what? His resurrection. His resurrection. He said, I'm dead, but I have to know that power that goes with the resurrection life. You need that power that goes with the resurrection life. That I may know him. That I might know him and have the power of that. He says, I know there's suffering with it. And the fellowship of the sufferings being made conformable, listen, unto his death. Isn't that a beautiful verse? Jesus was tempted just like we was. But he defeated death, hell, and the grave. By the way, he defeated it for you. He defeated it for me and for all those who received Jesus Christ. We've got no business to be run over by the Satan or run over by this world or run over by the flesh. God wants us to live a victorious life. And that's the kind of life he wants for each and every one of us. Let's stand to our feet.